What is up, everyone? Welcome to Season 2 of Bold School of Commerce. My name is Mike Tracklow, and I will be your host for not only today, but for the rest of the year. Uh, if you are just tuning in, thank you so much for tuning in. We're live on Crowdcast and Facebook right now. And this is Bold School of Commerce, year number two, season two. So welcome back, everyone. I hope everybody took some time to, uh, to enjoy some family and friends over the, uh, over the near break. Made uh, a few extra dollars over the Christmas season. And now everybody's ready to get back into full tilt. So for those of you who are just tuning in or who are new or who have never heard of School of Commerce, maybe you're just checking it out on Facebook right now and you see me, Thank you guys for tuning in. But Bold School of Commerce is a web series put on by Bold where we talk about everything from how to make your Shopify store better, how to thrive in e-commerce, how to make sales, how to start a drop shipping business, how to deal with returns, and everything in between. So these are live lessons and just like an actual classroom, you have an opportunity to not only listen, but also ask questions. So if I'm talking about something and you have a question, feel free to write in the comments section. Uh, feel free to, uh, to ask any question you want, really, and, and we'll answer them live on air, just like they do in an actual classroom. The reason why we do these Bold School of Commerce lessons is just to empower e-commerce entrepreneurs. Our job is to make you guys sell more, do more, be better, all on e-commerce. And that's exactly why we started this series. Last year, we had an unbelievable series I can recall we did 24 episodes. So every month we do two episodes every second Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and, and let me just take a look at the list here. Last year was so off. A few of the highlights that I wrote down, I just want to do a quick rundown of last season because we did so many awesome episodes um, from everything from how to strategically price your products. We talked all about having you know a, a low entry market penetration. We talked about pricing your products like premium products um, and, and everything in between how to choose a high converting Shopify theme. You know, there's so many businesses out there and there's so many e-commerce stores. Uh, the competition is thick and you want to differentiate yourself from other stores too. So um, how to choose a, a, a high converting Shopify theme was also one. And uh, uh, you know, we talked about drop shipping, how to automate your business. I think, you know, for 2018, you're gonna see tons and tons of more automation, whether that's through apps um, or stores or plugins or anything that, uh, that you can use on your store. Uh, social media, email, you know, selling, doing more um, to automate your store because that way, you know, you can put your store a little bit on autopilot and really focus on growing your business. Uh, we talked a lot about customer service. You know, customer service at the end of the day can almost be one of your best marketing tools. If you've got a really great returns policy where people are comfortable knowing that maybe if they get a product and they don't like it or it doesn't um, fit exactly what they wanted, you can easily return that. You can track it, all of that. Um, it's, it's awesome and it's really great. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of businesses out there that are doing these subscription box services or subscription, so, sorry, subscription businesses, whether that's dog food or pet food or t-shirts or hats or clothing or shoes or anything in between. And the idea of you having uh, an, a, an assortment of items shipped to your store, no, sorry, shipped to your home, uh, you have the opportunity to open them up. And you know what, if it's not to your liking, you can easily return them. It's, it takes your, your business to the next level. People really appreciate that. Um, we've got so many tools that can help you do that. And that's just one of the many things that we did talk about. Um, one of the things that we did talk about last year that we got a lot of, uh, a lot of positive feedback from was why product photos are so important to your marketing strategy and to your store. Uh, and, and we asked you guys because we truly, you know, this is, this is all about you. If you guys want to learn about something or know more about something, let us know and we'll come up with an episode and tell you as much as we can. But we didn't take it that step further of how to actually set up these photos. So if you'll, uh, if you'll see to my left here eventually, we're going to be showing you just how easy it is. I learned this trick over the break, I kid you not, on how to set up uh, awesome looking product photos. You know, uh, it's, it's really, really easy um, and, and it takes, you know, you might even have these items uh, in, in the comfort of your own home. Uh, I, I happen to go to the dollar store, you know, the Dollar Tree or Dollar Rama or Dollar Store, whatever you have. Go there, spend 10 bucks and you'll be able to take these product photos that'll be able to take your store to the next level. And, uh, and, and that being said, that's exactly what we're talking about. Season two, episode one, how to take awesome product photos. Now, why are product photos so important? I think that's, that's one of the main questions we have to answer. Now, growing up, you know, my mom always told me that you should never judge a book by a cover. And you know, that was always great because you, know, you, know, you, you don't want to make assumptions on, on certain people or certain things or on certain aspects of life. But at the same time, 
My mom didn't have an e-commerce store. And when it comes to e-commerce, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of stores selling very similar products. Uh, and, and, and that being said, you really do want your products to stand out. In fact, 67% of customers actually consider the quality of an image an important de uh, decision and an important factor when making a decision on, on making a purchase. So if you don't have awesome product photos, don't worry. Uh, you know, you don't need a ton of cash to do this. And that's also another really important reason why we wanted to do this episode was just to show you that you don't need to rent out a, a big studio with white walls and, and white lighting and nice cameras and all that. You can literally do it from the comfort of your own home, maybe from your office. Uh, all you need is a few items and we'll get to that right away. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the laundry list of items that you need. Uh, one of which will be a window. You know, yeah, you're going to have to do it near some natural lighting. Natural lighting is really important when it comes to, to product photography. But getting back to the question of why, why are product photos so important? And, and if you think about it, it has to do with first impressions. You know, you go to, uh, you go to an online store and you, you check out what they're offering and, and if you don't like you, what you see, you're probably immediately gonna be turned off and you're gonna go to a competition or a competitor's website. And that's not what you want. You know, when I kind of thought about doing this episode, I, I thought a lot about the idea of home staging. Home staging is a really good example. So you're buying a house uh, and you're checking out a ton of houses I'm sure some of them look great, some of them you know, look mediocre, some of them probably look fantastic, and some of them look like crap. As soon as you walk into that house, and if the furniture doesn't look very good, and it's not staged very well, you're probably going to be turned off, and you're going to say, this isn't the one. Without even you know, taking a step, taking a look inside, taking a look at the rooms, getting a feel for the places, seeing if there's any creaks or cracks on the floor, immediately your first impression is something visual, something that you see, and it could be something that maybe turns, turns you off. We want you to make sure that that doesn't happen. We want you to have really good high quality images, which is very easy to do. I'll show you right away with the, with the products that we do have here. Um, and we'll show you how easy it is to do. Um, it's not, it shouldn't be intimidating and it shouldn't be too difficult. And, uh, and, and that's just it. You know, maybe this doesn't apply to, to all of you, but you know, if you do sell uh, maybe an item that you created, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, that's a, a, a spice or a, or a food product or, a, or maybe, you, you know, you make your own clothing or anything like that. Something that is very unique, that there might not be a product available online. You know, if you are drop shipping or, you know, you're, you're doing anything like that, you already have access to a, a, a Rolodex of pictures that, avail that are available online. Um, but if you have unique products, taking your own product photography is going to be one of the best ways that you can showcase those products. Um, you want to have high quality images, which, you know, once you take the picture, you know, whether or not you're using an actual camera, like a fancy pants DSLR, or even if you're just using an iPhone 6, it all works the same. Not only that, once you take that photo, there are so many free online tools um, for photo editing that you can use. Um, you don't have to spend the big bucks on getting, a, you know, Adobe Creative Suite or Photoshop or InDesign or any of those ones, you know. If graphic design isn't your business and it's not your bag, you don't need to fork over those big bucks. I know I have my own Shopify store as well, and I know that you know you don't have a lot of money to spend on these things. So that's why we're going to be doing this episode today. Um, and uh, and I'll talk about one other way before we get right down to it and how to make this uh, this makeshift uh, uh, this photo box here. So. I did talk a little bit about before, you know, if you do have uh, a, a disposable income, maybe some extra money, maybe your Christmas was really great, your holiday season, you do have some, uh, some extra cash to, uh, to throw around at maybe getting some professional photos um, or, or some, you know, photos that you can use on your social media like that. The option is there to, to rent out a studio space. They've got tons of there. Uh, I know we have one in, in Winnipeg, for those of you that don't know, Bold Commerce is a Winnipeg bread company so that's where we're out of you know it's very cold outside it's very snowy so you probably don't want to take some uh, product photos outside right now but that being said there are places where you can rent a studio it has great white walls um, great natural lighting and you know for a few hundred bucks depending on the area that you live out of you can take a bunch of photos um, within the hour um, and and have that done now if you don't have that other option you can do it from the comfort of your own home or, or maybe from the comfort of your own office um, and, and the way that I, I mentioned earlier that, that I, I learned to do it over the break, uh, I was just perusing online and I was like, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of these before, but no one's actually showed me how to do it. You know, there's been a lot of articles, um, you know, and you can, you can read through the articles. And that's another reason why uh, we're, we're really big fans and really big and really big, we're really big fans, really big pumped about Bold School of Commerce is because 
It's not reading an article. These are hands-on lessons where you know you can ask questions. Um, you don't have to just read an article and click a bunch of links. So if you do have any questions about what we're about to show you today, feel free to let us know in the comment section below, and uh, and we're going to get right down to it. Before we get into it, I'm just going to take a quick look here just to see if there's any questions. Um, nothing at the moment, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Okay, so and and let's get right down to it. So as I mentioned. Taking product photos, it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, it, it, it's starting off, you know, it, it's going to be a little bit difficult, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, I'll talk. I'll talk right now about the uh, the products that you need. Um, use a simple list. So, if you've got your notepad out or maybe a piece of paper, or you know, you can obviously watch this uh, video after. Um, what do I got? I got six things that you need. So number one, you need the camera. Now, as I mentioned, you can use a, a DSLR camera. You've got the functions on there that work, um, the, the, the automation functions on there, um, or you know, if you know a little bit about product photography, maybe you do have that camera. Maybe, hey, maybe you got a, a, a nice camera over the, the holiday break. Feel free to play around with that. Um, that's gonna be the number one thing that you need because without a camera, you're probably not gonna be able to take product photos. Am I right? Am I right? Sometimes I ask questions out loud, like you guys are really there. Um, number two, you're going to need a table. Um, as you can see here, we have a, a red table. Now, you probably don't want to use a red table or something that's going to be very uh, have a, a large contrast compared to a white wall. But I just wanted to use the red table so that way it, it could really uh, show the other items that you do need. Um, and that being said, you know it, it won't even play a large factor because once we set it up, we'll show you exactly what you have to do. Now. Natural lighting is key when it comes to taking product photos. I don't know uh, if you can actually see the corner here. We don't actually have a window, but when you do do it, you're gonna wanna make sure that your table is set up next to a window so that way you can take advantage of all that natural light uh, and, it, and it's really gonna uh, make those, uh, those uh, items pop. We've got the, uh, the cactus in there, so I think that's the item that we're gonna be working with. Um, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, Mike, We've got natural light coming through the window. It's probably going to cause some shadows and it's going to look weird. I'm going to have to use Photoshop or Canva or PicMonkey or one of those photo editing tools to get those shadows out. And I would say, nay, 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 nay. Because what you're going to do is here, you're going to take these cardboard pieces here um, or some foam core or anything like that. And it's going to allow for that natural light to come in and absorb. And you're not going to have any of these shadows as we're going to set it up right away. It's really simple and really easy and really awesome to do. So that being said, you've got the camera. You've got the table, you've got a window, you've got a, a, a piece of uh, core or foam out here. So this is what I got from the dollar store. And I just used, uh, you're gonna need some scissors and some tape. I used this to cut it up because this is what the light is gonna be bouncing off of. And then the other item I had here was just, you know, a piece of construction paper. It's a little bit larger and allows for you to, to maybe take advantage of that and tape that on the wall. All, everything that you see here cost me under $10. You know, if you wanna get some better quality equipment, uh, or some better quality products, maybe that would work too. So you've got the camera, you've got the table, you've got the window, you've got the pure matte whiteboard, you've got some sort of foam core or some white construction paper or some sort, you know, they've even got those really big rolls that you can just roll. It's almost like a giant toilet paper roll that they use for like professional photography. I'm not sure if you've seen that before, but it works really great. I actually don't know where to find that, but I know where to find all this stuff. You can get it from from any, you know, Walmart, Walgreens, Michaels, Dollar Store, whatever, wherever you want to go, you can get this um, equipment. And then also what you're going to need, um, you're going to need some solid object. I've got a, a can of Coke or a can of Pepsi, uh, Pepsi Max, uh, same great taste, none of the sugar. You know, you can use 7-Up, you could use, you could use even a brick. It's just something that's going to be able to kick to, to keep this in place. I've actually got a, a pure leaf. Uh, tea bottle back there. So all it really is is going to help you uh, to keep that uh, to keep that standing, and uh, a knife and some tape, and and that's really it. So that's everything you need. So now that you have the laundry list, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you exactly what you need to do to set it up. Uh, we'll take a quick picture, and then you know what? I can even upload it um, when this eventually does go on our blog. Um, for those of you that are just tuning in, we're talking all about how to take awesome product photos. Uh, and especially for season two of School of Commerce, what we do is every second Thursday we film a, a live stream about an e-commerce topic that's going to help you thrive as an e-commerce entrepreneur. And then a few days later, we put it on our blog. It's time stamped, so if you don't have time to watch a full episode, you know, one, uh, 1 p.m. Central Time, you can just check out the blog and uh, and and walk through any of these lessons step by step. So. 
We're going to go over this right now. Um, after we finish that, we'll talk just a little bit about what to do after you do take those photos. We'll just talk about touching up a little bit. And, uh, and then we'll talk all about season two. We've got a lot of great episodes coming up, but let's get right down to it. So I'll just put my computer here for now, and we'll just walk you right through it. So as I mentioned, the first thing that I did was I took this piece of construction paper, and all you need to do is, you know what I'll even do? I'll just get these pieces out of the way, and then I'll set it up step by step for you. So you've got the flat table. You've got the flat table, you've got your scissors, and you've got your tape. All I did, and you can take a full roll, you can roll it all the way down from the top. Uh, so now, the important thing to remember here is you don't want to tape it right along the wall. What you want to do is, you want to leave some, uh, some of the paper on the actual table, on the service area. So that way, it kind of curves to the, to, uh, to the object or to the product that you're actually taking a picture of. So all you have to do is sort of align, align the product there, and you put the tape on the wall, and you just move it, and boom. Step one is done. So now you have this sort of sweeping uh, piece of paper underneath here. So that way, when you do take that photo, it, it's almost like a light box. When, when you actually do take these professional photos or these professional product pictures, um, a lot of the time they actually use a light box. And these are very expensive. Um, you know, it's a, it's a white box, so that way it's just all white lighting. They've got different natural lights and different lighting in there. You don't need any of that. All you need is, is, is this piece right here. So let's use, uh, we'll be using the cactus as, as the picture, or as the product. So you're just going to want to put it somewhere center, somewhere right around there. Keep in mind that you're going to want to do this by a window so that way you have all of this natural light coming in and, uh, and really making that, uh, that image pop. So the next item, as I mentioned earlier, was this piece of foam core. Now, on one hand, you could probably just use the piece of foam core like that. That didn't work in my, in, uh, in my, in my case here. You know, you're, you're limited on space. So all I did was I just took some scissors and I just trimmed it up. You know, it's like giving the piece of foam core just a little haircut here. And then what you're going to be using this for, as I mentioned, you're going to want to do it by a window. So there's going to be a lot of natural light coming and it's going to be creating a shadow. As you can see here, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's creating a shadow. You don't want that because when it comes to um, editing these photos, you're going to have these, these areas that are going to look you know, hard to edit and it's got, not going to make that picture pop. So in order to do that, you're just going to put up a barricade here using the foam core. Now, obviously the foam core isn't going to stand naturally. You can use a, a, a brick or anything like that. As I mentioned, Pepsi Max, same great taste, none of the sugar. All you're really going to do is use that as as a weight. So that way you've got, you can, you, you're going to want to align it to the wall so that way there's no cracks, there's no cracks in the back. So it's essentially, and I'm doing this without being able to see there, essentially it's a right angle that's going to be flush with the wall and it, it's essentially creating this light box without having the other, uh, the other side of the box on this side because this is where the natural lighting is going to be taking place. So Honestly, that's really it. You've got your foam core, you've got your, um, your white piece of construction paper, you've got your table, uh, and, uh, and I'll just move the yam out of the way here. So now, as you can see, you've essentially created a perfect light box where you're going to have tons of natural light. Um, you've got your service here. Keep in mind you might want to use uh, maybe not a red table, but as I mentioned, this is just going to make those um, the items pop. Now what you're going to want to do is there's a couple things. You can either take photos directly in front of the object, so like really, really right in front, or you can experiment with angles. You know, take the camera, you're going to take the camera here, you'll snap here, maybe you'll take it uh, back a little bit, maybe you'll experiment with angles. You'll experiment with different angles and you'll get, you'll get different lines and, you, and you'll figure it out that way. It's really uh, up to you at this point. So that's really it. You know, you've got everything you need here. You can just swap the items in or out. But as I mentioned, using items that I got from the dollar store, I was able to create this professional photo box um, that you can use from the comfort of your own home, from the comfort of your office, and you're ready to go. And that's honestly all you need. So it looks pretty cool, and, uh, and you can definitely experiment with that. As I mentioned, you know, you're gonna need some scissors, you're gonna need some tape, you're gonna need uh, uh, and, and those other objects, and that's, and that's really it. So, now that we've got that out of the way, the next step is going to be, sorry, I'm just looking for a, a little quick drink here. We've been doing a lot of talking. That being said, if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. So 
now that you've taken the photos, let's say you have 10 different products. You've got 10 different photos. Now it's time to do your touch-ups. So on one hand, if you do have the option, uh, if you do have the photo, uh, photo editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop, you know, Lightroom makes it so, so easy for you to play around with, you know, with different layers, different styles, um, uh, you know, anything like that that can really enhance your photos. Um, you know, shading and, and, and everything in between. Photoshop, you know, it allows you to do that as well. You know, play around with different features. Um, and if you don't have that though, that's not a problem because there's plenty of uh, uh, free online software, editing software that you can use. GIMP, GIMP is a really great one, um, GIMP.org. Essentially a free Photoshop and it allows you to you know, play with colors, play with layers, um, play with shading, you know, play with shadows, anything like that. Uh, another really great one is Canva. Canva not only allows you for you to um, not only play around with the image, but it, you know, it even allows you to, to put certain layers on there. So if you wanted to use these photos in your social media or in your email marketing, you know, you have a great picture, a great product photo, slap that bad boy on your website, then maybe throw that image in, in Canva or PicMonkey or Photoshop and add some copy, add some text over that and use that as an email banner, maybe something for social media. You know, you don't need to hire an expensive graphic designer. If you have awesome product photos, you can just use this photo editing software, you know, to put some layers on there, add some copy. You can essentially use the same product all season. You could have one, you could have your, your winter sale, your summer sale, you know, your anything in between. You know, if you've got Christmas, Valentine's Day, all the holidays that are coming up, you simply think of a sale idea every month, use a photo, you know, even if it was, for instance, take Christmas. Here's what got me almost all the time. Um, you see a product and, uh, and, I, and I was checking out a couple websites and you see the product photo and then there was, the, you know, usually you can put, uh, like using product discount, it's very easy for you to have, have uh, an item on sale and then you can have uh, an icon that either says sale or it has uh, an emblem representing a sale. I saw one that had a Santa hat on it and I was like, boom, I want it and I got it. And it was that easy. So you know what, take photos like that, add different kind of uh, different, uh, a little bit of sizzle, if you will, add some sizzle to your product photos. And it goes a long way. You can use these photos for your email marketing, your social media, and anything in between. Um, the last one, you know, we've talked all about it, uh, Canva, GIMP, PicMonkey. You know, you can even just Google free photo editing software and uh, you'll be able to find, uh, find anything that you really need. So that being said, what we've talked about today in case you're just tuning in, it's all about how to take awesome product photos. You don't need to be, uh, you don't need to be a, a photographer. You don't need to spend $350 an hour on a photographer. You don't need to spend $280 an hour to rent a, a, a white walled studio or anything like that. Um, that being said, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the tr questions here. Can you edit with an iPhone app? Can you, can you, can you use an iPhone? Oh man, absolutely. So this was a question coming from uh, Teresa. Teresa, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and, and the answer to your question is absolutely. Um, I, I was gonna take a photo with my phone here so that way you don't, you, you don't need to, to rent or spend uh, any money on, on your camera there. But there's, um, there's tons of photo editing software apps on there which allow for you to, to do exactly what um, you know, the, the, the Adobe Creative Suite allows you to do. You can add layers, um, you can even splice it up, you can turn your pictures into videos and movies and stuff like that. Anything that sort of takes your, um, your product photos to that next level. Um, the iPhone is, is great, I use the iPhone, I, I can't speak t uh, uh, towards Androids. But the iPhone, you know, this is the iPhone 6, you know, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 just came out and their cameras are, are absurd, you know what I mean, uh, in a good way. Um, they're so clear, they're so good. Um, there's, there's tons of opportunity there where you can, you know, edit photos on your phone. Um, my piece of advice though, and uh, I've talked to a couple of photographers about ju this just in passing, um, when they are editing their photos, they do like to do it on their desktop because it just gives you more surface area and more room to look at. So, uh, so that's a really great way to do it. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and it really allows for you to, uh, to, to have a, a bigger, uh, a bigger um, surface area. Um, you can also use the Dphone iPhone editor. Um, it's really simple to use. Um, it allows for you to do um, almost everything that you can um, with, uh, with all those uh, photo editing softwares that you do have out there. Um, 
if you don't have any natural light, yeah, that's that's exactly it. You can you can tweak the light settings using the uh, the iPhone editor. Um, it's just you know you go and you, you'll you'll snap a picture and it'll come up and and you'll be able to use it that way. So uh, Teresa, thank you so much for the question. The first question of 2018. Keep them coming. I hope you guys tune in. Uh, that being said, you know um, we talked about how what you need to have. We went over the laundry list of items that you need to take these simple product photos. Um, we talked a little bit about last year's season and how awesome it was. This is bringing us to the conclusion of this episode of Bold School of Commerce, Season 1, Episode 1, How to Take Awesome Product Photos. Um, for those of you that, don't, uh, that aren't aware, you can head over to, uh, to our blog or to the, bold school of, or to the boldcommerce.com website. Um, we'll post the link uh, below. That way you can have access right to the Bold School of Commerce um, webpage there because 2018 is going to be lit. I will tell you that. Um, January 4th, that's today, so I don't need to tell you about that one, how to take awesome product photos. Two weeks from now, as I mentioned, it's every second Thursday of the month, January 18th, product description for dummies. That might sound a little bit harsh, but I don't know how many times before the internet I would go to my local library and I would look up how to XYZ for dummies. And it, all it really was was a step-by-step -step way um, for them to, for somebody to teach you something. So we're not calling you dummies. Uh, all we're saying is this is if you don't have any knowledge about writing product descriptions at all, um, we're going to help you out. Product descriptions go a really, really long way. You know, you can have the best product photos in the world, but if you don't have any good product specs and the copy is, you know, iffy, you know, make it, make it fun, make it on brand, have some fun with it. We're going to talk all about that. Um, a couple of the other lessons that are coming up, why you should be using your Shopify blog, augmented reality and e-commerce. We're going to have a special guest on that episode. And keep in mind, 2018 is going to be so lit. We're going to have guests left and right. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. You can even shoot me an email, mike at boldcommerce.com. If there's something that you want to learn about or you have a question or maybe you want to be on Bold School of Commerce and you have something cool to talk about, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, also on Twitter. We're constantly advertising these bad boys on Twitter. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Mike Tracolo um, for all the upcoming School of Commerce lessons, podcasts, books to read, Facebook, campaigns, social media, you name it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be live and it's going to be lit. This has been Mike from Bold Commerce, Bold School of Commerce, season two, kicking off today. Thanks for tuning in. I can't wait to see you guys in two weeks. Later, alligators. <laughs>